Well, summer is here and grass is growing again. And if you're like me, you like to get out and mow the grass. But some yards are a little easier than others. Fortunately for my friends Howard and Cam, they have a self-propelled lawnmower, so this job isn't too tough. But I'm not here to do yard work today. We're going to build a storage caddy for their lawnmower. The space in here is limited and Howard has a lot of stuff. So we're going to help him out by building a platform for our lawnmower with storage space underneath so that we can really take advantage of all the available space here. For this project, we're going to need a 4x8 sheet of half-inch pressure-treated plywood, pressure-treated 2x4s, and pressure-treated 2x2s, eye protection, a speed square, a tape measure, a pencil, a straight edge, we're going to use a four-foot level, clamps, a circular saw, a drill driver, three-inch exterior screws, one and five-eighth inch exterior screws, a jigsaw, slip-resistant treads, and of course, your lawnmower. First, we've got some measurements to make. Starting with this area, I'm checking to make sure we have plenty of clearance for the lawnmower. So 22 inches, yeah. that's our width. Then we measure the front and side of the lawnmower from tire to tire. This will give us our minimum measurements, which will help determine our layout. We can work with those numbers. Excellent. Before we get started on the real work, though, I'm drawing up a quick sketch to give Howard an idea of what I have in mind. And then a ramp coming off of it to get the lawnmower up on there. And then we would have you know, two by fours under here, and then connecting the two by fours back here. So you could have storage up underneath your lawnmower. So what do you think about this? I think it is very useful. It's always a good thing to have extra storage. After agreeing on the plan, we're ready to make some cuts. A lot of cuts. We start off with the length and width of the storage frame. out the legs or our vertical pieces for this frame. We're using a speed square and a circular saw to keep our cuts perfectly straight. Well, almost perfect. Not the straightest cut, but it'll probably do. Next, we lay out our top and bottom frames. We're leaving one side open, giving it this U-shape to make it easier to store things once it's all put together. Attaching two boards together with a screw like this is called toenailing. This technique is useful when you're only able to connect boards at an angle. Next, build a second U-shaped frame identical to the first one. This will be our top plate. Toe nailing can be tricky. To make it easier, start the screw straight until it barely bites into the wood and then adjust it to the correct angle. Okay, Howard, we have our base plate and our top plate done, so now we can put our vertical pieces in and assemble it all together. Oh, well, it seems like everything's running smoothly. We'll be done before we know it. I hope so. Then I can get out of here and you can get to mowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky me. Or you can put Howie to work, right? Does Absolutely. he like to he likes to mow? Yeah, just like I did when I was a kid. He loves mowing. <laughs> He'll be upset to find that I, I already cut the front yard. Aw. <laughs> we didn't mean to upset Howie. <laughs> If you've got a hilly yard like Howard and Howie, I'd recommend a self-propelled mower. But take things a step further and get one like this one that's also all-wheel drive, so you won't have to work nearly as hard. I tell you what, why don't we go ahead and assemble these together before we stand them up. These inside L-shaped vertical legs, which consist of a 2x2 attached to a 2x4, will give the platform more strength and stability. With all of our pieces cut and ready, we assemble the frame using our three inch screws. We lined up right? Mm-hmm. Gotta make my side look as good as your side. <laughs> After the verticals have been attached to the top, we flip it over and connect the bottom. Now we're going to leave the sides open since it's kind of just in your shop. Yes. But I guess if you ever wanted to, you could put some skirting around it to make it look clean and pretty. But I don't yeah. see you ever doing that. Ugh. I may or may not. You know, in your free time. <laughs> Next, we measure and mark this sheet of plywood for our platform and ramp. The first cut will be the rip cut, which will give us the width of the platform. Okay, Howard, as they say, let her rip. Mm -hmm. 
Then we cut them to length. All of this construction work could be a little dangerous for Howard's daughters to be around, but that doesn't stop them from supervising from inside. I'm not used to having an audience. Yeah. <laughs> I think they want to come out here and see what Daddy's doing. They probably want to help. <laughs> Sorry, girls. You can't help Daddy on this one. Okay, since we have the ramp in place, I'm just going to get a mark of what the angle is so we can put this 2 by 4 underneath for a little bit of support. Because that lawnmower can get pretty heavy. Now we need to find the angle of this mark so we can match it with our circular saw. Here's the best way to do that. Line the pivot point of a speed square at the point where the edge of the board and pencil mark meet. Then turn the square until it lines up with the mark. Follow that down to where the angle notations meet the board and you've got your angle. In this case, it's 35 degrees. After unplugging our saw, we set the blade to match the 35 degree angle. These two angled verticals need to be flush at the top with the platform legs before attaching. Okay, let's go ahead and cut our little border that we're going to put around the platform to keep the lawnmower in place. We're using 2x2 two two material for this border. To get a measurement for the two long sides, we're simply laying them on top of the plywood and making a mark. We're going to cut a notch into both side pieces, then cut another 2x2 two two to fit inside. For these precision cuts, we're clamping the long side boards down and cutting them using a jigsaw. With the notches cut and these boards attached, we're able to measure the length of the removable piece and cut it to size. Instead of going over to a friend's house, Elva thought it'd be fun to stay home and watch our project come together. But I guess she's learning the hard way. It's way more fun to actually be doing the work than sitting on the sidelines. I didn't know I was gonna be bored. <laughs> and the last piece of woodwork, adding two borders to the ramp. Okay, let's put the ramp in place, see what we got. That's exactly what I pictured in my little noggin. Yeah, that's a fine ramp. <laughs> and I believe my daughter agrees. And it'll save some room in my shed. Awesome. Well, let's go put it in place and see what we can put underneath it. Awesome. Oh, mm. light as a feather. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I think I have the heavy end. <laughs> There we go. These non-skid pads will give the mower wheels some grip, especially handy if the wheels are wet. And the last step before filling up the new storage area, attaching the ramp. I think this is perfect. You're, you have all the space underneath that's now occupied, so you have a lot more open space on your shelves. So I guess you can buy more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's outstanding. I love it. I have so many ideas for upcoming projects. Follow along on Facebook so you don't miss out.